Hi, Steve here bringing you another fine modo experience. This time I'm going to look at procedural modelling. More specifically, I will be looking at selections. In part one, I will look at how selections work and how to use geometric and topological properties to make your procedural selections robust to change. In part two, I will look at how selections can be combined and then at how to create your own selection items. A crucial part of any kind of modelling is the ability to apply operations to specific elements, i.e. vertices, edges and polygons. When direct modelling, we do this all the time, probably without thinking about it. But in procedural modelling, we have to be a bit more thoughtful. The payback, of course, is that if we do it right, we can, like Doctor Who, go back in time and change things without having to start again from scratch. So when you're creating a procedural model, you're normally working in this section here and adding operators. So you start with a base mesh, which can be an ordinary piece of geometry, or you can create some geometry procedurally. So that's what I'll do for this example. Let's add the trusty cube. And now we have a live cube. We can adjust the dimensions and other properties, such as the number of segments. We can apply operations to this cube. For example, we might decide that we want to bevel the top of the cube. And we can do this in a similar way to how we work in direct mode modeling. So let me select the edges along the top and then add an operator. And what I want to add is edge bevel. And now the tool is live. And we can adjust the bevel to our heart's content. And the nice thing, of course, is that we can now go back to the cube and adjust the sizes again. And everything holds together nicely. So let me apply something else, for example. Maybe I want to do a polygon bevel on this face here. So I can select the face, add an operator, polygon bevel, and again we get the live tool. We can adjust the bevel and bevel that face in. And it all still works. We can go back to the edge bevel, adjust that, and the polygon bevel is applied successfully. So at the moment I'm just showing the resulting mesh of the whole stack and this stack works from the bottom up in the same way as other stacks in Modo do. For example the shader tree. Now sometimes it can be useful to go back and interact with the model sort of in the past as it were. So if we click on the cube here we can't we're currently looking at the result of the whole of this stack. And what we might be interested in doing is, is seeing what the state of the stack is at this point here. And that's where these two buttons here come in handy. So this button here enables what's known as ghosted view. And it shows you the cube geometry as it was at the start of time in, an, in the grey colour. And then the blue colour is the geometry as it will be after we've applied all the operations. So it gives you a view of both the past and the future. If you click on this button here, then we just get the view of the operations at that point in the stack. So as I move up the stack, you can see that the each of the operations is applied in turn, and we can see the state of play at each of those stages. Now let me be a bit awkward. Let me go back to the cube. Let's turn our ghosting off. Let's go back to the cube and adjust the number of segments. And you know what's coming, of course. Things are going to go wrong. Oh dear, look at that. We've got a right royal mess now. So let's undo that and try and work out why that is. 
If we look at the edge bevel, you'll find in most of these operations there's these twirl downs here, the tool pipe and the selection. And what we're interested in in this tutorial is the selection. This is the thing that chooses which geometry is going to participate in this edge bevel. And we'll see that in this particular instance the selection is controlled by this operator called select by index. And the indices here are the indices of the edges to which the bevel will be applied. Now that's fine so long as we don't change the edges that are generated in the cube. So resizing the cube is fine, everything just sticks together and works. But if we change the number of segments in the cube we're going to be generating a whole bunch more edges and hence the numbering of the edges is going to change and this edge bevel is going to fall off. So let's just turn the polygon bevel off so that we don't have to worry about that for now. Go back to our cube and increase the number of segments. And now we have this problem that our bevel has, has fallen off. What we would like to do is to re-specify that that bevel applies to the edges around the top of the cube. And actually that's very easy to do. Let's make sure we're in the mode where we're looking at the object in the past as it's created from the cube. Select the edges that we actually want to bevel. Now go to the select by index operator and set those edges into the operator. And now we should see that that bevel is applied properly. Modulo the fact that it's a little bit uh, over enthusiastic. There we go. Just a bit too much bevel being applied. OK, so we've managed to go back and we've managed to fix that. We can do the same thing for our polygon bevel. This select by index is selecting number three, face number three, whichever one that is. Um, let's go into the show me the object as it was created in the stack mode and now reselect the polygons that we want to apply the bevel to. And there you go. We're now beveling that face as it should be. OK, so the moral of this story, if ever there is one, is that using this select by index it's pretty convenient when we're creating objects in the first place, but it can be a little bit brittle because the indices that are used to select the faces, edges and vertices can change if we go back in the past and do certain changes to our models. And then we have to go back and uh, retrofit the appropriate indices into the select by index operator. In the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to look at using topological and geometric selections. By topology, I mean a property like the number of sides on a polygon or the number of edges incident on a vertex. Geometric properties include position, length, area and orientation. Topological and geometric properties can be more resilient to change and so can help to create more flexible procedural models. So for the purposes of this video I'm just going to show you a few simple examples. Now apologies if these seem a little contrived, uh, but uh, hopefully you can generalise these to your own particular situation. So first up let's have a look at an example involving a sphere. Go into the Mesh tab, add our sphere generator, and what I would like to do is bevel the top and the bottom of the sphere. Now we could select those triangles directly and apply the bevel, but a better way would be to notice that the top and the bottom are in fact triangles and not quadrilaterals. 
So if we can select by the fact that these are triangles, then we're quids in. So first up, let's apply the polygon bevel. And if we look at the inside of the polygon bevel, we'll see that there is no selection. And in common with direct modeling mode, if there is no selection, then everything is selected. So we would expect this polygon bevel to apply to all of the polygons in the sphere. If I uncheck group polygons, we can see this is actually working. We can bevel out the sphere or bevel it in. It's quite an interesting shape, but that's not what we wanted to do. What we wanted to do was select the triangle. So let's add our selection and in the selection assemblies, we will find select triangle polygons. And now this will apply just to the top and the bottom of our sphere. Because these are selected using a topological criterion, we can go back and modify the sphere and those selections should stay stuck in the right place. Let's check that uh, I'm not lying. We can change the number of sides. We can change the number of segments and the selection will stay in the same place albeit that the size of the selection will, will be altered. Another interesting thing we can do is extend our selections. So supposing we wanted not just the triangles at the top and the bottom, but also some surrounding geometry, then we can go back into our selection, add a selection, and add a grow. And we can extend the polygons that are selected that way. And indeed, we can do other clever things such as invert the selection. And now the selection applies to the negation of the selections below it. So that's a very simple example of using a topological criterion to select geometry in our procedural model. So that was topology. How about a bit of geometry? This one's going to be a little bit more riggy, but nothing too complicated. Let's start with our rusty cube. And what we want to do is bevel the top of the cube, but we want to do it in such a way that we're not using select by index. So first let's add in the bevel. And uncheck group polygons and you can see the bevel is is now live and we want to just bevel the top not the sides nor the bottom and the way that I'm going to achieve that is by setting the selection to select by fall off now we haven't got a fall off so nothing is doing anything at the moment and I'll add a linear fall off And of course, the fall off is the wrong way around. So let's change it so it's pointing in the Y direction and it's upside down as well. So let's rotate it through 180 degrees. And we don't want it in the middle of the cube. We want it at the top of the cube. So we really want to move it up. But I'm not going to do that just by moving it. I have a cunning plan. So at the moment, the fall off is selecting everything because everything is within the fall off. And the select by fall off has a default threshold of 50%. If I change that to 100%, we should see that the bottom is now no longer selected, but the sides are still selected. We need to move this fall off up to the top of the cube, but the cube can change size. Uh, it can be moved around we look at the cube's properties, you'll see that we can change its position and we can change its size. And all of those things are going to move the top of the cube around. So let's bring those properties into the schematic because we're going to need those to rig this up. If 
we want this fall off to be at the top of the cube, we need to move it up by half of the size in the y direction. So let's divide the size by 2. And if we move the cube in the y direction, we also want to move the fall off along with it. So we need to add that. And what do we want to do with this? Well, we want to use this to drive the y position of the fall off. So we need to see our fall off and the channels in the fall off don't currently have a position, but that's easy. We can add in a position and drive its position that way. And magically it's jumped to the top and we've only got the one face selected. Now if we go to the cube and resize it, we will still be selecting that same face because the fall off is going to follow us. If we change the number of segments, everything is still working. The other thing we can do, of course, is we can manipulate the mesh using ordinary item transformations, and that should all hang together. Oh dear. It doesn't. What's going on? Well, the problem is that our fall off here isn't following the transformations of the mesh. But we know how to fix that, don't we? We can parent the fall off to the mesh. And now anything we apply to the mesh, to the mesh, will apply to the fall off. And so our bevel will be applied. Let me just go into the bevel and inset it. Let's group those polygons. And now when we manipulate the mesh by rotating it. Everything works. We can move it. Everything works. We can even scale it. And it all hangs together. So that's a very quick example of creating a rig to apply a selection geometrically and make sure that it's flexible enough that we can manipulate the model in lots of different ways. And that's all we've got time for this week, Basil. In the next episode I'm going to dig a bit deeper into the selection mechanism and we'll even create our own selection items. Contain your excitement.